what do I think about NoFap? In other words, is not looking at porn or masturbating going to really help you take your life to the next level? Because I guess at the end of the day, what we're always talking about here is what can you do to take your life to the next level? And NoFap is one of those really odd, interesting internet trends I wasn't even really aware about. But apparently NoFap comes from supposedly this 2003 Chinese study that found that men who refrain from masturbation for a week experience a roughly 150% increase in testosterone on the seventh day. So this dude, Alexander Rhodes, posted this research study on Reddit, and after that, supposedly, this whole movement came to be. So in this video, I want to share what I think is actually the true history of NoFap, which comes from Taoist mystical practices, as well as why I am pro-fap, with a little asterisk and caveat there. So I want to share what I think is the middle ground between NoFap and living a full, enjoyable life, while also a life where you perform well and are building out the coolest version of yourself. What's up guys, Alex Hine, author of the book, Master of the Day. Now, if you're interested in this whole NoFap thing, you're probably into improving your life and figuring out the rituals, the habits, the things successful people do to get that in your own life. Well, one of the best ways to start by planning your best year, and I've included the first link below, is a worksheet to help you plan out basically having your best year ever. So you can check it out. The first link in the description is a free download on how to plan that best year, figure out the best things to work on in order to make that happen. So what was interesting to me is that I wanted to actually take time to reflect on this, on where NoFap actually comes from besides that study. Well, I'm actually a doctoral student in traditional Chinese medicine and Taoist sexual practices that are literally thousands of years old actually incorporate seminal retention. Now, one of the reasons is that Semen is actually considered jing, like this kind of condensed life essence. I mean, literally, ancient and modern people can see that a man and a woman come together and they can produce a child. That's pretty miraculous. Like two humans meet, there's no third human, and then literally a creature comes out of another human after these two kinds of essence meet. That was always kind of considered a pretty amazing thing to ancient people, and to me, it still is. But that essence that comes out of a man and goes into a woman and they combined create a new life force essentially, this human, that was viewed almost as this kind of energy that is expelled from a man. So if he conserved that energy, it's called Jing in Chinese medicine, if he conserved that, the theory was that he'd be able to live longer. Now we know biomedically that over having sex and under ejaculating really both have health consequences. There's damage if you overdo sex or don't ejaculate at all. But one of the reasons why a Taoist initiate would conserve his jing was because of the fact that the belief that if you conserve your jing or you perform what's called retrograde ejaculation where it goes up into the bladder, it can actually go up an energy circuit. There's the ren mai in the front and the du mai in the back, which forms something called the microcosmic orbit, that it can shoot up up into the head. And that would be like some kind of opening or activating force in the body. So there was a 4th century physician and kind of Taoist mystic named Gu Hong. And Gu Hong said that those seeking immortality must perfect the absolute essentials. These consist of treasuring the Jing, circulating Qi, and consuming the great medicine. Now Gu Hong also said that it's folly to believe that performing sexual arts alone can achieve immortality. And some of the ancient myths on sexual arts had been misinterpreted and exaggerated. The sexual arts had to be practiced alongside alchemy to attain longevity. And he also warned that obviously, if practiced incorrectly, it could be dangerous. So my personal opinion on all this stuff is just that to understand where this comes from and the point that it's trying to play in a person's life. Like I 100% agree that not watching porn excessively is good for a person's mental health, for sure. Like, you look at the rates of increase in erectile dysfunction in men, and it's extremely high compared to what it was historically. And I think a part of that is because men are more overweight, for sure. Humans, I feel like, are the most unfit they've ever been. That's strongly correlated with erectile dysfunction. But also, the amount of just, like, psycho-emotional dysfunction. 
Like we spend our days living in virtual reality, which humans have never throughout human history, maybe besides dreaming and just thinking. But this kind of virtual reality that's being put towards us rather than us generating it. But also for most normal men and women, you know, if you're not a Taoist sage who knows how to somehow circulate his jing and or her jing and then become like a enlightened mystical being, that's probably all of us. For most of us, there is a natural rhythm to ejaculation or having sex or masturbation that's actually healthy. And that complete seminal retention for most people is actually unhealthy. This is research on what it does to your prostate, what it does to hormonal levels. So my whole thing with NoFap or with anything you see circulating around the internet is try to understand what it does and to try to understand the behavior in your own life. So am I jerking off five times a day because I'm just an Italian dude and that's what Italian dudes do? Like that's a pretty unconscious response to life. For starters, how do you even find that much time if you have a job? But nonetheless, am I doing that because I'm just bored? I'm just home all day, I don't know what to do, like I'm just on the internet and I go to a porn site because whatever, I'm just, there's a lot of stuff going on and I don't have anything to do after work or after school, so I just do it. You know, am I doing it because I'm anxious? Like maybe it's the thing that calms me down or helps me sleep, in which case I need to figure out why do I have anxiety? And maybe like going to the gym is going to be a healthier outlet for that rather than having to masturbate and drink two gin and tonics to actually go to bed. So trying to understand what's behind all of this, rather than me being like, this is bad, this is good, to me the whole point of this channel is to have a more conscious approach to looking at yourself and looking at your goals. You know, so for me, no fap can just become another kind of either a punishment, like a puritanical, like, you shall not masturbate ever or else you'll go blind and burn in hell. There's that, which is more than a little bit extreme, or it can just be something that's like, it's something you feel like guilty about or weird about. And to me, none of those are the point. Just try to understand yourself. All right, guys, that's my two cents. And honestly, when I was 29, I did a challenge with a friend. Neither of us would have any kind of ejaculation for 30 days. I was dating a girl, so that meant no sex for 30 days. And ironically, funny enough, after three weeks, I had a wet dream as if I was like a 14-year-old boy which was both really weird, but it was to me clearly proof and evidence to my body that there's a natural hormonal cycle and this stuff needs to come out in frequency for there not to be a problem there. So I don't know, you can take that antidote for whatever it is, if it's not just a weird, embarrassing thing, <laughs> but just treat it for what it is. Don't get addicted to it. Don't turn into like this puritanical self punisher. That's it. Find the middle place. All right, guys. So Best way to stay in touch if you want to use NoFap as one of the major goals you're working on in terms of habits to live a better life, check out the free goal setting worksheet. It's the first link in the description. That'll help you figure out exactly some of the rituals you need to work on daily to have this year the best year of your life. So check it out, the first link in the description, and then come on over, check my last related videos out there and there.